This is a tutorial for cutout fracturing in physics lab. We'll begin by importing a mesh from the samples folder of our application, in this case a wall. Under view wireframe, we see that this is nothing more than a box. Cutout fracturing is used when we want to chip away tiles or pieces from a mesh, but not destroy the entire mesh. In order to use cutout fracturing, we switch to the cutout fracturing mode using this button. We have a representation of a slice plane, which is used as the backstop for the cutout process. Now you can have a slice plane in any of six directions, the plus and minus x direction, plus and minus y, and plus and minus z. To see them, you change the view using these buttons. In this way, we can have slicing from different directions around an object, like a post or a pillar. We'll only slice in the minus y direction. In other words, the cutout will go into the y-axis. Be sure to enable minus y slicing and disable minus x slicing. These enable checkboxes are independent of the view. The view is only showing you the settings for the one that you've chosen. The default is to have the backstop be at halfway through the object's bounding box. To adjust that, we adjust the cutout thickness, bringing the thickness down to about 30 percent. We see we've moved the backstop in a bit. If we don't want a flat backstop for our cutout pieces, we can introduce a little noise. A small amount will do, perhaps 3 percent, because that number is relative to the overall size of the mesh, and this is a very thin direction. In order to describe the cutout pieces, we use a fracture map. Clicking on the fracture map control brings up a loading screen, and we can load in our fracture map. A fracture map is just a bitmap with lines drawn on it by an artist, which will determine the shape of the cutout pieces. In this case, these patterns resemble the brick pattern on the texture map on the wall. Hitting the fracture button and using the explode tool, which is automatically selected for us, left click and drag, we can see that we've cut out the pieces defined by the fracture map, which happen to correspond to the, the brick pattern on the texture map. Switching to the rotate tool by pressing O, I can see that we've gotten a, uh, an uneven surface using the noise. But the interior texture is not correct for this mesh. To set the interior texture, we can load a texture and create a material out of it. In this case, we have a stone bitmap. Now we go to our materials panel, and we see the stone bitmap has been turned into a material. I can set this material as the interior material and change its scaling so that it fits the mesh better. There we go. These are level 2 chunks, as we can see here. If we set our preview depth to 1, switch back to the explode tool, you can see there are two level 1 chunks, the backstop or the back face, and one chunk representing all of the cutout pieces. The cutout pieces are children of that chunk. And of course, as usual, the level zero chunk is the unfractured mesh. Going to the playground, we can see how this mesh fractures, hitting it with the damage tool. We have a few problems, including the fact that the wall falls over and 
pieces all come apart at once. Going back to the editing tool using F11, let's see how we correct these problems. Under the Assets tab, we can set a number of properties in the chunks themselves. Let's go to level 1. First of all, we'll click on the back face. It's highlighted in red. And select Don't Fracture. Since this mesh starts off static, and it can't, this chunk cannot be fractured, it will not move. It will never be turned dynamic. For cutout fracturing, it's also handy to select the one chunk that represents all of the pieces of cutout chunks and select Don't Damage. In this way, all of the damage will go down into the cutout pieces. And you'll never get a case where the whole face comes off at once. Another problem was that the cutout pieces all came loose as soon as one was fractured. To prevent this, we can define some support on the chunks. An easy way to do that is by clicking World Overlap. This means that chunks which touch the static world, in this case there is a static ground plane, those chunks will be defined as support chunks. You also must define a support depth. I'll define depth 2 to be the support depth so that it's the depth 2 chunks, these chunks down here that touch the static world that are defined as support chunks. Now, going into the playground, now applying damage we see we have more reasonable behavior, although we might want to increase the momentum that gets transferred to the chunks. When we apply damage we can set that using momentum field here. The rest of the chunks stay intact because of the support given by the bottom chunks. If I remove the support to the top chunks by breaking chunks in between free, the top chunks come free and the bottom ones remain supported. And I can continue to fracture this chunk island. These chunks are just the chunks defined by the artist. If we want to break them down further and get a finer level of detail with the fracturing, we can apply slice fracturing to each of the cutout chunks. In the other tutorial, we cover slice fracturing and its various parameters. So I won't go into detail about slice fracturing here. Going to the Tools control panel under the Slice Fracturing mode, Let's set some fracture parameters. Let's have slice planes that are randomly offset and oriented by 30% and 30 degrees. Let's only slice once to a max depth of 1, with two slices along each axis. I'll use target proportions of 100, 100, 100, but I won't fracture in slice mode. If I do that, I'll just get that. Instead, I fracture in cutout mode, but I select Apply Slice to Cutout. Now it slices each of the cutout pieces when it fractures. Switching to Depth 2, we see the cutout pieces. Switching to Depth 3, we see the cutout pieces have been sliced down further. Going to the Playground mode, We have much more detail in our fracturing. This concludes the tutorial on cutout fracturing in Physics Lab.